today we are going to shed some light on the subject of nirvana the word nirvana is a very well known word in the western world and it is used very frequently however to understand what kind of state of existence it is is not easy is beyond our comprehension because there is no way that we can experience it first hand in life so to know in an exact manner as to what this state of existence is is something that we can only imagine and try to understand but not be able to know by ourselves until we reach a stage which really is the highest stage of achievement in life now hindu and buddhist philosophies they both refer to it in their own way and they have similarities and differences we will try to understand first the word itself nirvana what does it mean nir is the first part of this word and vana is the second part of this word nir means no negative that means no existence when there is no existence that means there is no birth and when there is no birth there is no death so nirvana means no birth no death meaning free from the cycle of births and deaths the first utterance of the buddha soon after his enlightenment and attainment of his unshakable salvation makes it very clear he said nirvana is profound it is difficult to see it difficult to comprehend it it's very tranquil very subtle beyond reason it's excellent and realizable by the wise achieving this nirvana state of nirvana is considered as the highest goal of a holy life in hinduism and buddhism both a very high premium is placed on the accomplishment of this very rare and highest goal by the buddha himself even by krishna who is considered as god by the hindus according to buddha the ultimate goal of life is attaining nirvana and not acquiring honor fame or wealth according to him this alone should be the sole purpose of every life krishna says having attained the state of nirvana one realizes that there is no gain higher than this there exists no work that needs to be done any further the bar to achieve uh, this coveted goal is very high according to buddha the requisite to get to this is to extinguish the blazing fires of craving by destroying desires and craving all bonds are cut off and suffering is overcome with the disappearance of suffering which life is 
accustomed to bring. There is a complete emancipation. The most coveted freedom. And that is Nirvana. But not knowing the fact that craving is at the root of all suffering, that fact is called ignorance by the Buddha. Buddha gave the concept of independent origination. There are 12 links in this chain of events. Each preceding link is the cause of the succeeding one. When the cause is removed, the succeeding event will not take place. In short, Buddha describes independent origination as such. Through the total fading away and extinction of the craving, clinging is extinguished. Through the extinction of clinging, the process of becoming is extinguished. Through the extinction of becoming, rebirth is extinguished. Through the extinction of rebirth, decay, death, sorrow, lamentation, suffering, grief and despair are extinguished. Thus comes about the extinction of the whole mass of suffering. In simple words, end of suffering means attainment of nirvana or nibbana, which in Pali language it is called. In Pali language, Samyutta Nikaya gives us some understanding as to what Nirvana or Nibbana is. So according to this, Nibbana is the uncompounded, the ultimate, free from defilements, the truth, the further shore, the subtle, very difficult to see, the unfading, the stable, the undecaying, the ineffable, meaning not describable, the undifferentiated, the peaceful, the deathless, the excellent, the good, the security, destruction of craving, the wonderful, the marvelous, the state from free from ill, the harmless, the passionless, the purity, the release, the non-attachment, the island, the cave, the protection, the refuge, and the goal, which the well-accomplished one has taught. So as you could see, it's a conglomeration of so many adjectives and a beautiful description given to us to make us understand a little bit more about this state of existence. Once again, in Buddha's words, truly there is a realm where there is neither earth nor water, neither fire nor air, neither ether nor consciousness, neither this world nor any other. 
neither sun nor moon. This I call, Buddha says, neither arising nor passing away, neither continuing nor being born or dying. It is supportless, free from the cycle of birth and death and without any basis. This is the ending of suffering, the Buddha says. Further, he says, There the stars shine not, nor does the light of the sun. Neither is there the illumination of the moon, nor is there the darkness. The form, location, age, and the measure cannot be given of Nibbana. That is the state, a true, real state. Our discussion on Nirvana should not lead one to feel that this goal is so difficult that it is not attainable. On the contrary, this goal is attainable in this very life if all impurities are eradicated. After the cleansing from all of our defilements, this is possible. Buddhism and Hinduism both converge to the point of similar understanding that the state of nirvana can be realizable in one's own lifetime.